The two primary premises to my uh, work, my research, uh, is based upon the hypothesis that the human body, when it's in its perfect health, is alkaline by design. The other part of this hypothesis is that all functions of the human body produce acidic waste products or toxins that are then either eliminated through the four channels of elimination, which would be urination, defecation, perspiration, or respiration, and if not eliminated, are pushed out into the compartments of the interstitium. This is why there is so many misdiagnosis and false diagnosis in current medicine. Because what is not measured or what is unseen cannot be determined without first understanding that the interstitium and the compartments of the interstitium are significant measurements in determining and preventing liver and pancreatic cancer. So the thing, single most important factor then in maintaining and preventing disease and maintaining good health is managing and maintaining the delicate pH balance of the blood and the interstitial fluids. The abstract on uh, this paper that was published in 2015, which actually precedes the announcement of the discovery of the interstitium by three years, of which uh, we had discovered many, many years ago, and had been testing for over a decade as it pertains to the chemistry uh, of the interstitial fluids of the body and the compartments of those uh, of, of the interstitium and how important it is to measure the chemistry of these fluids and compare them to the human blood. This approach that we take in the prevention and treatment of liver and pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer, is an environmental approach dealing specifically with the internal fluids or the milieu or the terrain of the body. Our approach in our non-invasive diagnostics and in our non-invasive treatments focus not on the matter but on the environment that surrounds the matter. 80% uh, of our extracellular fluids are intracellular fluids. 20% are blood plasma. If we look at the total volume of blood, uh, volume of fluids in the, in the human body, we're talking about 40 liters, approximately. Out of that 40 liters, 20 liters, okay, over 50% of the body fluids are not even being considered, measured, and no one knows how to measure them, generally speaking. There are exceptions to this. Our focus then is to measure the 20% of total fluids and with the blood, which is 5% of the total fluids, which is 25, which is a total of 60% to get a better diagnostic view of what is happening inside the milieu or the internal environment. Blood pH is at a pH of 7.365, which is slightly alkaline. That is the target point. When we're looking at interstitial fluid, that was decided or found by other scientists establishing at 7. Point, guess what? The same number, 7.365. It's identical to the blood. So the body's trying to maintain, it's a dance between the blood and the interstitial fluids. So when we look at these fluids, we have the blood extracellular fluids, which includes the plasma, the interstitial fluids. We are doing both of these tests without drawing one drop of interstitial fluid or without drawing one drop of blood. This is totally non-invasive. And the information is available within minutes. Today, if you go to the hospital, how long do you have to wait to get a pH of the blood? 
and the results of that. About 30 days. We don't have time to waste. So here we see the compartments visualized then by the interstitium. These fluids of the interstitium make up 60% of all body fluids. Today, most all fluids being tested are a portion of the extracellular fluids, which represent only 12% of all body fluids. The extracellular fluids, which include the blood plasma, is about five liters, as I mentioned. And of course, the interstitium or the uh, interstitial fluids would be 20 liters for a total of 25. Now, based on this hypothesis, even though we are alkaline by design, we are acidic by function. So where do acids come from? Acids are, are waste products that can come from metabolism. When the cells are using energy, they produce waste products. What is one of the common waste products? Lactic acid. So in our 3D functionality test, guess what we test? We test lactic acid in both of the fluids. Because in every cancer case, lactic acid is excessive. And that has to be dealt with. These are the things that we can now measure so we can better help our patients. And even more important, we can actually test then the treatments that are being used if they're effective. So this is why we're measuring the sodium levels, which could be normal in the blood, but abnormal in the interstitial fluids, or the reverse, depending on the state of affairs. So we're measuring in the blood all the electrolytes, the magnesium, the calcium, the sodium, the potassium. We're also measuring something else that's very important, and that's the bicarbonate levels of the blood. We need to know the bicarbonates of the blood, but that information could be normal and not useful unless we test the bicarbonates of the interstitial fluids. Do you know why? because that's the majority of the fluids of the body. This is where the show is taking place. And if we have either high or low bicarbonate, we need to address that. So this is why we're measuring the sodium levels, which could be normal in the blood, but abnormal in the interstitial fluids, or the reverse, depending on the state of affairs. So we're measuring in the blood, all the electrolytes, the magnesium, the calcium, the sodium, the potassium. We're also measuring something else that's very important, and that's the bicarbonate levels of the blood. We need to know the bicarbonates of the blood, but that information could be normal and not useful unless we test the bicarbonates of the interstitial fluids. Do you know why? Because that's the majority of the fluids of the body. This is where the show is taking place. And if we have either high or low bicarbonate, we need to address that.